Hello my lovelies, welcome to my little cottage by the sea, the place where I love to stitch and craft my way to a vintage inspired and sustainable lifestyle. In today's video I'm going to be sharing everything that I've been knitting lately and FYI it's all hats and whips. Before I dive in and show you all the chaos that I have spread on my dining room table in front of me, I just want to say a huge thank you for all of your support and an apology for being MIA over the last few weeks. I came down with a bug in October and then I had an operation in November, then I got another bug and it's just basically been an autumn and winter of really poor health and I just have not been able to to get myself back on here and I have missed you so incredibly much. I just wanted to say that I do read all of your comments and I am going to respond and reply and get back to you and I really, really appreciate you still being there for me because I hold you in my heart and I'm here for you. I've just been feeling very sorry for myself and laying down a lot doing this. I have my knitting basket with some goodies in and an entire dining room table spread with the few things that I've actually finished. Lots of stuff that I'm really excited to share with you and I have a festive cuppa. So let's crack on with everything I have been knitting lately. Firstly actually with what I'm wearing I have shown you this jumper. I'm getting a lot of wear out of it because one of the things I realised with my knitted garments is that I don't have many long sleeve things and although this was an experiment I kind of made up the I was gonna say recipe made up the pattern there's lots of little issues with it things that I need to improve I've actually really enjoyed it and I really love this vintagey chartreuse color even though I made up the pattern and there's lots of little issues with it it's just been a really lovely thing to wear over dresses and I'm just wearing it over this sort of 30s inspired house dress that I pattern cut and made over on my Patreon but long sleeves lovely it's even got little shoulder poofles and then I'm also wearing one of my most treasured items this is a knitted um, fly agaric mushroom that my late mother knitted and she passed away nearly 30 years ago now so this is a very loved piece that I have I've got it sort of secured on with a pin because it, it's not terribly sturdy and I actually think I'd love to knit some more mushrooms. If you have any mushroom patterns that you've seen or know of, pop them, the link to them in the comments because I'd really, really love to get knitting some mushrooms. I sew mushrooms and I sew mushroom brooches, but I just feel like I need to do a bit of The Last of Us, but a little bit more fairy tale. So the finished things are basically hats, small things. I've been knitting constantly but don't seem to have actually finished many things but the first thing is my mini beanie that I put as a free pattern as one of the treats of um, October. I didn't get to the end of the treats because I basically fell over mid-October but I absolutely love this hat. I really love Minnie Mouse. I'm gonna like ruin my hair. My hair's always messy anyway. And I knitted another one of these, one for my my kiddo, because it was their birthday, and I knitted it in this really lovely Heather um, Aran, this is like for worsted Aran weight knits, and then I put, um, I think, very dark grey pom-poms on this, or maybe they were black, I don't know, I don't think I took any photos or, or film of it, but this is a, a really, really nice, um, I think it's called Heather Tweed, I'll try and, and find what it is, but I knitted one of these and one of these, they're a very quick knit. And you can find the free pattern on my website over on my journal, and I'll link that as well, because even though there's not that much time now before Christmas, if you are in need of a, a knitmas, giftmas, knitmas type thing, this knits up incredibly quickly and it's very satisfying. Now, I've never really been a bobble hat type person, but when you have pom-poms like these, what could you possibly do? I had to sort of find something to make that I could actually use these pom-poms because they're so incredibly lovely. 
and I knitted a cable one, an Aran one, which I loved. I've absolutely fallen in love with Aran. It's just got a very wide, wide cuff and then you pop it on and you've got like a, it can go around doing this, which I may be the only person who finds that amusing. So that's that one. And then a pale pink one. This in a, a very lovely blushy pink and you can turn up the cuff like thus and just absolutely love these. I, I really think actually I need to make some kind of scarf with this and then have like pom-poms at the end just to go for maximum pomposity, pom-pom-posity. It sounds good in my head, probably sounds ridiculous to hear. But really love these and I'm a, a beanie hat convert, especially with these pom-poms, which I find very comforting to fondle, although it does make me look a bit strange in public. My final finished object, another hat, is the very lovely Batty About Bats Beret by Killer Kitch Lizzie. She's such a sweetheart. She's got a lovely channel which I urge you to go and have a little look at. Now this is supposed to have a bat on it, but I just haven't got round to knitting the bat. Lizzie very, very kindly gifted me the pattern and it's a really lovely pattern. And it's knitted out of an Aran, a worsted. I actually was thinking about putting one of my brooches on this. So I might still knit the bat and put it on a pin a little bit like this so that you can have the bat. I mean, it's incredible with the bats, but this is just a very lovely, very easy pattern to follow. Works beautifully, only takes up a little bit of wool and actually would make a perfect Christmas gift. And you can make it look incredibly French and chic, or you can goth it up a bit with either the bat that you get in the pattern, which I'm really looking forward to knitting over the festive season, or some kind of creepy crawly brooch, which I feel will elevate this. Maybe even you could put a like pom-pom on there and go for that more teens, Edwardian teens, 1920s type beret style. So really fabulous pattern, really lovely. And thank you very, very much, Lizzie, for being such a sweetie and gifting me this. I shall be knitting many, many more. I seem to have endlessly been working on lots of the projects that I showed you in the previous knitting videos. So it really is sort of everything is a work in progress, but actually isn't that a perfect metaphor for life in general? One of the many reasons that I love knitting. So you may remember that I had found a pattern for a sort of golden girls type cardigan, an Aaron cardigan in a charity shop. And I, had run out of wool or I'd put some wool aside and then couldn't find the wool. Luckily, when diving in the stockroom of my beloved Jacob's haberdashery and actually found a few more balls of wool, but I'm really, really grateful for all the suggestions that I asked at the time, like what you thought I should do if I couldn't find the same dye lot and you know, like what my options were. And so many people so kindly took the time to to tell me what they thought and I just so so appreciated you taking the time to do that because I felt like I had a really good plan then and it would all be okay. Luckily I found a few more balls, hopefully I will have enough to finish that cardigan but I'm going to really enjoy knitting that over the festive season and just as something like on the, an aside to that would it be worth scanning in that pattern and just popping it up so that if you wanted to knit it too, I'm calling it my Sophia Petro, is it Petronelli? Sophia cardigan from Golden Girls because it's exactly the kind of lush cardi she would have worn and she is one of my icons. I thought that it would be really lovely to pop it up and make it available to you as a sort of a thank you for all of your support and for helping me so much. When I ask questions, I always get such lovely responses. So let me know if you would like, and then you could knit the cardigan, and then we could all wear Sophia cardigans and pretend to be in the Golden Girls. The next thing that I'm still working on, and actually I haven't touched, I haven't done anything to this, is the 
Tasha could make that Wanderella cardigan. Really love this. I don't know why I haven't sat back down and continued knitting it because it would just be perfect to wear at this time of year. And um, again, I'm going to be finishing that up in the festive season whilst I eat mince pies and drink ginger wine. And I will be looking forward to wearing it in the new year with some of my sewn garments that I'm really excited to finish. I'm really trying to make sure that when I'm planning knits and I'm planning sewing, I'm doing it in quite a holistic way so that I actually have outfits because then I tend to wear those things. Occasionally things that are a whim work really well, but I know that when I'm looking back at my wardrobe, doing a wardrobe audit, and when I'm thinking about what I'm wearing, including the things that I'm knitting, that when I've thought about things in terms of outfits, they end up getting a lot more wear and I, I tend to make more practical choices. So when you are doing something as labor intensive as knitting, you do need to kind of ensure that all your hard work is gonna be worth it. So I'm looking forward to finishing this one and it's lovely and soft. So my next work in progress is one of my Malmaison roses. This is just the remainder of the wool that I did the Batty About Bats Beret from. It's really lovely. I tend to mislay all the labels, so I'm really, really sorry. I will try to find them all and pop them all under the video just in case you wanna have a look. I'm not doing a huge amount of Knitmas Giftmas this year just because of ongoing health issues, but because these are so quick to do and are just really enjoyable to knit, I'm actually gonna use some of what was left over from the mini beanie that I did for my kiddo because her partner's mother, mum, um, Rachel, very lovely lady, I'm gonna knit her um, a rose in this and this is a color that I think she'd really, really like. And I've also been knitting loads of these roses for my Christmas wreath. I've knitted them for lots of friends and people that I know. And also I've put them individually on my Christmas tree as well. So it's a really fun little knit and just takes up scraps and I'll link it below. You can find it in my shop. Another gift that I am knitting, and I think this is probably one of the last things that I'm knitting for anybody, is for a gentleman friend of mine. And I am knitting him a hat. So this is the same hat as the um, the bright pink one, I'm not gonna put a pom-pom on it. And it's this really lovely um, Aran wool Tweedy. It's a wool synthetic blend. Got these lovely Aran things. I've done the Aran cables just a little bit closer than the pattern dictates, but this is the pattern just here and there's some nice hats on there it's a really really lovely thing to knit and i've probably got enough left over for some kind of scarf or something i'm not going to um kind of stress pressure myself to knit that because i really need a sort of a break where i've just not got the pressure of things i need to sort of mentally emotionally relax more than physically relax actually now um but I love doing Aaron, and that's why I'm so excited about doing that Sophia cardigan because I didn't know that I really loved doing Aaron. I knitted to that bright pink one and found the process so enjoyable. And then I started thinking that I was going to carry on with that Sophia cardigan over the, the Christmas and New Year period. My next work in progress is this, the 1950s pullover by The Sublime. Susan Crawford, and I showed you this in the last video and I said I'd made a mistake. And I was thinking that I could ignore the mistake and I absolutely couldn't. So I frogged the whole thing back and started again. And this is the back here and it's really, really lovely. It actually takes quite a while to knit just because I really have to concentrate said in that last video when I was talking about this that it's really really slippery and once you sort of lose a stitch or something goes a bit wrong or you have to go back a bit it really easily ladders or it does for me but I'm now on the front here thus so it's got this lovely deep V so when you put it on you can put it on over 
really lovely shirts or things with statement collars and um, have loads of fun with that. So that's well on the way. I put all of these works in progress UFOs to one side when I just finish up the couple of little gifty things that I want to give to people in my life. I had to go and find the other thing that I am making, which is the Susie Bowes sweater by the brilliant Subversive Femme. She's called Bex the Femme on, on Instagram. And you may know, if you spend time with me here in my little cottage by the sea, that I've had a bit of a love-hate relationship with lace. I'm very attracted to lace patterns. I really want to do lace, but I have just found it very, very tricky to get the hang of. But this pattern is so lovely. I wanted to do a green festive one. So this is the front and I'm just working on the, the sort of lace section and you thread through either ribbon, which I think I'm gonna do, get a pale pink, blush pink velvet ribbon to thread through this, or you can knit. And I originally wanted to do a sort of deep green with silver, but the wool that I wanted to use, which is um, Serdar Country Classic, the four ply, they actually discontinued their, um, their forest green, which is such a shame, I don't know why. And I could have found an alternative to it, but I got this from my beloved Jacob's Haberdashery, and they very kindly put aside this sort of cranberry, I still think this is quite festive, it's a really lovely, lovely colour, and I'm really enjoying knitting this. One thing that I have just sort of thought about, I'm a member of Squid's uh, School of Vintage Knitting, which is fabulous. It's just one of the loveliest things. And I haven't actually knitted anything yet. I've been a member for quite a while, but I just love the whole thing. And I've been a bit scared of doing it. I don't know why, it feels like a bit of a commitment to work out the maths and your measurements and swatch and so on. I do this though with pattern cutting sewn woven cloth so it shouldn't be beyond me but for some reason you know sometimes you put a silly impediment in your head and she very recently did this thing of like a, an audit of your knitwear so that you could kind of work out what you were missing or what you seem to need or what you had too many of and so on what colors and so forth and one of the things that i realized especially as i've been wearing this is that i tend to knit things that are short sleeve but actually, I need cardigans and I need long sleeved things. So, I had a bit of a bonkers moment and I sat down and I worked out, kind of using this that I'd muddled through and made up and the pattern that is brilliant for short sleeves and I've kind of developed a long sleeve version instead. However, I'm not sure I've got enough wool so I've got to just check if um, Jacobs have got some more wool. I've knitted the, the cuff for the long sleeve, so it will sit round there, and we shall see. But it would be great to have a long sleeve version and a short sleeve version, because one of the things that I've realized that I really want to do moving forward is I, I want to be a little bit more organized with my knitting, and I want to plan more knitting into finished outfits, so that I'm not just sewing things, and I prefer to wear sort of a dress with a jumper over. I feel really comfortable like that. So I'm kind of thinking about that in terms of moving forward and all my knitting and sewing plans for 2024. Because I have so many projects on the needles at the moment, I didn't want to start any new ones until these were done. That's a really good incentive to get them done, not allowing myself to buy any more wool or or new things or look at new ideas, although who am I kidding, that's gonna happen. But I did pick up a couple of new things that I'd really love to share with you now. The first thing that I found is this book, Texture by Erica Knight. And I actually found this in a charity shop and I just love this really chunky cardigan on the front. It sort of reminds me of those 1920s cocoon coats. It gets so cold in my little cottage by the sea in my sewing room 
and actually when you're at home being cozy I feel when I've been doing this wardrobe audit and looking at knits and looking at what I'm sewing that there really are some gaps where I need some more sort of comfortable clothes to wear at home because my tendency is to sort of get dressed up and wear the outfit but recently where I've not been feeling great it would be nice to have some more cocoony nurturingy things to to walk around in my cottage especially where it's so cold so I'm aiming to be stylish and practical but I picked this up and I love Erica Knight her books are incredible and this one is just full of the most glorious photography and then because life is serendipitous if you are on the right path and you're putting all the good out that you possibly can my dear friend Georgina Piper who takes a lot of my photos I met her in the wedding industry she did a lot of the photography for weddings that I did the wedding dresses for hope that makes sense anyway she's one of my nearest and dearest and I feel very very fortunate to know her she actually takes the photographs I don't think for this book but she is one of Erica Knight's photographers and she mentioned me to Erica and Erica got in touch with me and invited me to her Christmas fair, which was really, really lovely. There were some fabulous things there. It was so lovely to meet her and to talk to her. I had to really try not to fangirl. I'm usually quite sort of calm, but um, I was a little bit excited to, to meet her and she's such a lovely lady. And she very, very kindly gave me a sample of her new wool, which is this, it's a really beautiful shade of pink, my favourite. I don't have a label for this because it is a new wool on her website and it's a fully traceable, ethical, sustainable wool um, produced here in the UK and it comes with a QR code. So when you do your QR code, you can actually see the sheep that the wool has come from, which is a really wonderful, wonderful, Thing. So I was really, really touched that she was so kind and, and gifted this to me. And she asked me what I was going to knit. And I said, well, I'm going to knit one of my vintage tassel berets because that has a huge sentimental meaning. If you know already, apologies for this, but basically the vintage tassel beret comes from a 1930s pattern that me and my late mother found together and we sat there and knitted them and I just had this sort of handwritten jotted um, notes of it. I don't have the original that we found in the charity shop all those years ago. So this was a really special moment for me and I shall be making a beret and I will have a little bit of wool left over so I'm not sure what I'll be doing with it but it was just so lovely and I will be looking for some wool to do this big snuggly cozy cardigan which I may finish in the middle of August in which case it will be totally and utterly useless at that time but great for the autumn and winter to come because winter is always coming. The other wool I got and I just got four balls of this it was on sale in Jacobs when I was teaching a workshop there I just thought it's so pretty it's homespun double knitting by King Cole and I actually, without glasses on, I haven't got a hope in hell of um, reading what this actually is made from. Uh, so if I squint, no, I literally can't. Um, I thought it was so pretty because it's the very blushy pink with this flex, like a tweedy effect. So I picked these up and then actually I saw the same wool, probably it won't be the same dye lot, in this fabulous little... Um, haberdashery in Tenterton which is a beautiful little town just over the border into Kent so I live in Hastings in East Sussex which is just on the border with Kent so you just sort of go across um, some lovely fields not literally across the fields but you go through some lovely countryside and arrive at Tenterton which is beautiful and this shop has opened there in the store that used to be Laura Ashley and they had quite a bit of this so I might see if I can get some more and the dye lot's not too bad. Now you've told me it's all right, it's what I'm going to do for everything. But I definitely need cardigans and if I can find just a very, very basic, simple cardigan, puff sleeves, long sleeve, full tizzy style, um, that is what I'd like to make with this. 
The other thing that I could do actually is just get a, a plain pink and do all the ribbing and everything in the pink and do the front and back and sleeves in this. So there's a few options there. I don't have a pattern for that. If you know of one and can recommend one for me, super simple, super easy to knit, um, definitely puff sleeves, then, then do let me know because um, that would make my life complete. So last couple of things to show you. I came across this really fabulous vintage pattern from Mariner's Heritage. It's three ply wool, so I'll have to investigate that a little bit in four sizes, 34 to 40 inch bust. And I just thought this was really, really pretty. I think it's sort of late forties, but very much of the time. And the fact that it goes up to a 40 might be quite easy to sort of um, work with for me. I really want to give Intarsia and Fair Iron and things a go. And I thought maybe this is sort of quite a good starting point. I'm not entirely sure. I'll have to sort of really look at the pattern, but I just think it's really pretty. And actually that looks quite festive. So maybe it's one that I can do for next year because I'd really love to get to next Christmas and actually have loads of Christmas festive knitted items that I've actually knitted myself. That's something that I I feel like I should make a, a bit of a goal. I generally don't buy knitting magazines or um, really look at them, but this one, knitting, really caught my eye because it's got a whole thing about the late great Dame Vivian Westwood. There's sort of some information about her and then some incredible patterns and I mean, I just thought this was wonderful, this um, lacy pattern here. There's a sort of a, a review of her life. I'm very, very um, keen on all of her work and her as a person. And look, this one, look, that lacy cardigan, also by Erica Knight. Uh, maybe she'll be happy to give me some advice about knitting lace. Um, I'm sure she won't mind, but that was really lovely. And I thought the styling of it was really fabulous. Um, this sort of tartany, punky, buy less, buy well, all the things that we should be doing. I thought my my kiddo would really love this one. Um, I might actually see if um, she likes that and then I can knit it for her. And I thought both of these, so this sort of uh, tweedy one with the pretty neckline was lovely and the, co the collar on that cardigan was really fab. So there's there's a lot there. And actually it's really nice looking at pictures of wool, isn't it? Especially like if you're not allowing yourself to buy any, there's a bit of a way of like scratching that itch. It's been so lovely sharing everything that I've been knitting and <laughs> still knitting with you today. And I hope that you've enjoyed it and that you've seen some things that you find interesting. I just wanna share one more thing with you before I sign off from this um, knitting vlog, I suppose you'd call it. Um, Selvage magazine, I've been collecting these for years. I haven't bought any recently. This one is actually from, um, oh, I don't even know when this one's from. It's issue 80, so quite a long time ago. And there's this wonderful article in here. This one's all about knitting, I think, the focus of the magazine. There's, they're themed every, every edition. And it's got these really beautiful illustrations and it's called Feeling Better, Knitting to Improve Health and Wellbeing. And as I said at the start of this video, this episode, I've just had such a difficult time with ill health and sort of constantly feeling unwell and just all of these things going on. I have got to the root of it and I don't want to bore you with all the details. I am on the mend and one of the things that I have really realised is that knitting is such a mindful, cathartic, healing thing to do, probably more so than sewing. I will always love sewing, it will be my first love, but I'm definitely having an affair with knit. And I just wanted to read a little bit of it um, to you before I say au revoir. So the person who wrote this is a, a, a medical person of some kind. And they say therapeutic knitting combines knitting with the practical knowledge to improve well-being. Anyone can prosper from it and it can also manage the symptoms of many medical conditions. At its core is the fact that we all have the ability to change neurologically, 
biologically, behaviorally, and socially. We can even change the connections in our brain and grow new brain cells and pathways. The person that is you changes with every experience you have. Excitingly, change is possible right into old age as long as you keep learning new skills and stay mentally and socially active, all of which knitting facilitates. Isn't that wonderful? Thank you so much for spending time with me today. Very, very overdue, but it's been so lovely to hang out with you and to share all of this knitting with you. And I really, really hope that wherever you are in the world, you're keeping very safe and well, and you are going to have a really lovely, restful, peaceful, festive season. I shall see you now in the new year. Lots of good stuff to come. Sending you and yours all my love. Merry Christmas. <laughs>